So today, I got solid confirmation that Pedro Pascal is playing none other than Maxwell Lord in Wonder Woman 1984. A bit of news I actually got a few weeks ago, and I'm sure you've seen the rumored headlines as well. And I found it really unbelievable, quite frankly, which is why I haven't reported it until now. I wanted to get concrete uh, confirmation, and concrete confirmation is what I now have. So we shall discuss it. Now, why did I find it so unbelievable? I bet a number of you find it unbelievable right now, even though I can tell you that it is indeed the case. And that's because first off, this is what Pedro Pascal looks like in the film. Now, not to say he doesn't look good, but he looks absolutely nothing like Maxwell Lord, a character that many of us felt since Tom Cruise has been so eager to get into the DCEU. I don't know, is he? But there, you know, everybody's wanted to get uh, Christopher McQuarrie in there, and since they're apparently a package deal, we've been wondering who Tom Cruise could play. And while some people said, um, you know, a Green Lantern, I felt he'd make a really good Maxwell Lord, and I've seen other people say that as well. Tom Cruise, go the villain route. I think, you know, it was a really cool idea. And so I think especially when people have that in mind, to say, well, instead you're getting this, I don't, I don't envy Pedro Pascal being in that position. Uh, now, also, there have been rumors, further rumors, that it's Pedro Pascal's character who will be the one to bring back Steve Trevor in a make a deal with the God sort of way for Diana, right? You know, one of those deals with the God that's too good to resist, but, you know, ends up having some uh, serious, <laughs> some serious fine print. And speaking of fine print, side note, I can also confirm to you that Steve Trevor is returning all of the film Heaven Can Wait, where what that means is that uh, Diana and maybe a few others, right, can see Steve Trevor, but everyone else sees the formerly dead body his spirit is currently inhabiting. It's very comedic. It was used to comedic effect in Heaven Can Wait, right? Uh, and that might explain the fanny pack too, by the way. Uh, but this is, a, while this is a very clever nod to the 1978 Warren Beatty film, itself a remake, by the way, uh, and that's not a 1980s movie, Patty Jenkins, but I hope that Patty Jenkins, you know, it's 1978, but I, I mean, I, it's the time period, I guess. But I hope that she understands that sometimes Sometimes clever homages still don't fit uh, with the character and the narrative. Translation? I don't think fans are going to appreciate the Heaven Can Wait nod when, if it means that Steve Trevor can't stick around beyond this movie, you know, he's on borrowed time, right? And that he isn't even legit back, right? I don't, I mean, I think that maybe it might be a smart play with some critics and some industry people, right? Uh, they might be like, oh, well played. I love all the 80s references. But I think fans will be like, I don't care about that Warren Beatty movie. Give me Steve Trevor. Especially because he could so easily crawl and escape out of Hades considering the Greek mythology angle. It's not even necessary. Side, side note, by the way, I also heard that one of the ideas they were kicking around for the movie is that Steve Trevor, while he's back, would help Diana borrow an experimental jet from the military, a.k.a. her invisible plane. That was a development idea. We'll see if they still kept it. Uh, and apparently she also will fly towards the end of the movie, although how she doesn't fly then later in Justice League? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, now, I felt that Pedro Pascal was likely playing Demos, the god Demos, who's the son of Ares, maybe looking for revenge after what went down, uh, what went down in the first film, right? Uh, Demos also recently showed up in Greg Rucka's Rebirth run with his twin brother Phobos uh, to great effect. Uh, that, you know, and you know, two Pedro Pascals. I mean, this looks more like a Demos, uh, maybe twinsy situation, quite frankly. Uh, and Demos is someone who could totally bring back Steve Trevor in such a fashion. But Maxwell Lord? Unless, of course, Maxwell Lord is Demos masquerading as a human. I can honestly see that, you know, to be, you know, quite frankly. Um, that makes sense to me in a Hollywood executive creative kind of way, right? And also someone who's a non-comic book person. Because a comic book person would say, how can you have Maxwell Lord without mind control powers? And my confirmation includes that that is the case. He will not have the, that power set in the movie. Not wearing a black turtleneck. <laughs> I added that one. But I think every comic book fan would agree with me. And not having Wonder Woman snap his neck, as she did so famously in the comics before the DCEU soups even laid eyes on Zod. Uh, I'm still annoyed they took that important character moment away from her, and I've talked about it at length, right? But they did. You can't, you can't change the past. And the, mo and the, the fact is, is that most people, particularly mainstream audiences, 
associate the neck snapping with Superman. It's just, there's no, go, there's no take backsies. And so you can't have every member of the DCEU Trinity going around snapping necks. But that's not to say you can't, still can't have the Maxwell Lord uh, Wonder Woman dynamic from the comic. And I realize that Marvel Netflix already did a mind control villain, male villain versus a female hero brilliantly. But that doesn't mean you can just rip apart these characters and their legacy to fit, you know, your own, your own ideas, right? Looking at you, Patty Jenkins. Uh, I feel these are unnecessary hurdles for Wonder Woman 1984. Like, why do this to yourself? Why, you know, put this division with comic book fans, right? But maybe the movie has other elements that are so awesome. I've liked some, I've liked some of the stuff I've seen quite a bit. Maybe it can overcome this. But again, why have to overcome anything? I mean, I don't know why this just can't be Demos. Why put Maxwell Lord in there? It's like, I'm sure that they were like, oh, the comic book fans will love it. And I'm like, did you ask a comic book fan if they would love it? Because that's not Maxwell Lord. <laughs> I mean, I'll put an asterisk, maybe Pedro Pascal. I mean, I love the actor. I think he's fabulous. Best thing, in my opinion, in um, Kingsman 2. Uh, I, know, I know the movie wasn't for everyone, but I think he's incredibly talented. Maybe he can change our minds. But again, why give him that hurdle? Why can't he just be an amazing Demos? Right? So I know a lot of you say, and Patty Jenkins I trust, you know, just like we used to, people used to say about Christopher Nolan, although how'd that work out, right? <laughs> um, uh, so I'm curious, particularly to those people, what you think of these changes for Maxwell Lord and also Steve Trevor, uh, especially since for those of you who are so supportive of Patty Jenkins, what I heard was is that she fired everybody off the first movie who wasn't totally in lockstep with her. And you know, I can understand having a lot of, you know, faith in your own vision, right? But I think when something turns out so well, why break up the dream team, right? I mean, you might be like, well, we had some fights on set, but apparently it worked out great. So let's continue to, to have spirited discussions, right? I mean, she's still the director of the movie. She still would have final say, especially after um, all the, fan, the fans that back her after Wonder Woman, right? Um, Interesting. Interesting indeed. So again, share your thoughts down below. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.